あ次のセッションでございますが、えー、次のセッションは、えー、学術界の、えー、最先端を行く、えー、早稲田大学、えー、東京大学、京都大学、慶応義塾大学の教授陣をお招きして、えー、YC のパートナーと、えー、大学発のイノベーション推進活動について、えー、議論を展開していただこうと思っております。えー、モデレーターは、えー、VNEXT の,あの佐藤輝秀さんです、えー。Our next session is the role of the university in the innovation ecosystem. 佐藤さん、お願いします。はい、おはようございます。ありがとうございます。Well, first of all, really,、uh, thank you, Kat. Thank you, Ri,、uh, for, for sharing the, the great story, great trajectory, and the super encouraging story of YC.、Uh, and then we will have、uh, three days of your、uh, participations. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure that、uh, all the audience from Japan, the startup founders, future founders, are really thrilled to, to hear、uh, the story. And then hopefully we can make more bridges between、uh, Japan and then Silicon Valley, as we have been discussing. Thank you.、Um, next session,、uh, we talk about the,、uh, uh, on the theme of the role of the university、uh, in the innovation ecosystem.、Um, Uh, of course, we have a、uh, cat from YC, and everyone knows her now after、uh, the morning session.、Uh, and then today,、uh, we have four very distinguished uh, speakers uh, from four top universities in Japan.、Uh, and again, I would like to deeply thank、uh, each of four universities,、uh, faculties, professors、uh, to support this、uh, second YC event in Japan、uh, to happen. When it comes to、uh, innovation ecosystem,、uh, universities play the very pivotal role、uh, in researches,、uh, developing cutting edge、uh, technological seeds,、uh, connection with industries and enterprises, and of course,、uh, growing talents. And all those top universities、uh, are now deeply supporting the entrepreneurship and innovations, and there has been a robust support system built up、uh, for startups at each university in Japan. Today,、uh, we have uh, uh, Kasahara Sensei,、uh, Senior Executive Vice President of Waseda University.、Uh, thank you, Kasahara Sensei.、Uh, we have Kawahara Sensei,、uh, Professor in the Department of Electronic Engineering and Information System,、uh, also Professor of Graduate School of Engineering、uh, at, at Tokyo University.、Uh, we have Kitani Sensei、uh, from Kyoto University.、Uh, he's a program specific professor. And then runs the Office of、uh, Society Academia Collaboration for Innovation in Kyoto. And then、uh, we have Tsubota Sensei、uh, from Keio University,、uh, the professor and chairperson of the、uh, Department of Ophthalmology.、Uh, and he also, he actually himself runs a, a startup called Tsubota Lab. So it's Hi, konnichiwa. fascinating. Thank you very much, Tsubota Sensei. Hello. So, today、uh, we would like to cover the following points during the session.、Uh, we only have 60 minutes, but、uh, I'm,、uh, you know, we try to make it,、uh, make it on time. I'm sure that、uh, maybe 60, 60 minutes is not, not enough、uh, to share the whole story. But、uh, one point is how the support system for startups have been evolved at each university in Japan.、Uh, second,、uh, what are the opportunities and also、uh, remaining challenges? Uh, for university led startups、uh, to, to fund, to grow further, uh, uh, to become uh, you know, meaningful uh, uh, businesses.、Uh, so that's the second point. And the third point, having Kat here, how YC is also、uh, collaborating with universities in the US、uh, as well as in other countries so that we can learn from other countries. And lastly,、uh, of course, you know, we would like to、uh, make more bridges between、uh, Japan and、uh, Silicon Valley. So, we would like to touch upon how Japanese universities can collaborate more、uh, with YC、Anjou. going forward. Okay, so、oh, now I would like to、uh, pass the mic to the uh, uh, speakers uh, uh, and ask them to share、uh, how each university is supporting the startups、uh, in recent years. Uh, so uh, it would be great if you can start with uh, uh, Kasahara Sensei、uh, from Waseda University. Okay, thank you very much. So,、uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so、uh, I'm Hironori Kasahara, Senior Executive Vice President at Waseda University, and、uh, I was also ITPD Computer Society President 2018. 
And uh, Waseda University is located in Tokyo. And uh, we are located in Tokyo. And uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, distinguished guests from all over the world. Uh, US President Bill Clinton and the Chinese President Hu Jintao and uh, uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and uh, industry leaders like Bill Gates uh, and uh, Jack Ma uh, from Alibaba. So uh, we are collaborating with uh, international organizations. And the feature of Waseda University, we have uh, 10,000 CEOs in Japan every year and uh, we have 630,000 of alumni. Uh, all over the world. And the uh, founder of Sony, Uniqlo, and uh, Mercari. Mercari is the uh, first Japanese uh, unicorn ventures. Uh, those founders graduated from Waseda University. And also, we have uh, a lot of uh, academic leaders. Uh, president Aiji Tanaka was the uh, president of International Political uh, Science Association. Myself was the uh, IEEE Computer Society president. And uh, currently, Toshi Fukuda. He is the president of IEEE. He graduated from uh, mechanical engineering of Wasa University. And uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of successful ventures. And uh, in this event uh, from Wasa University, two ventures for medical and the bio uh, venture will talk about uh, their business on 22nd. And uh, uh, we have uh, Oscar Technology. This company is using my patents and the softwares to develop paralyzing and uh, power reducing compiler for ARM, Disk 5, Intel, AMD, and so on. Based on this experience, we are proposing Waseda Open Innovation Ecosystem. So, for venture startup and acceleration, we need a fund and also we need a very good teams. So university trying to help to prepare the good uh, teams, uh, business model, accounting, and so on. And the two uh, startup ventures, we need a strong patent. So our, our university is helping to apply and uh, acquire IP, minimizing the researcher's load. And uh, to have patents, we need a very strong research, understanding social needs. So we are uh, recommending to collaborate with industry. Uh, industry have a social needs and uh, we collaborate to, to solve the very difficult problem uh, with industries. Graduate students and the professors collaborate and uh, maybe unique answer, unique solution we create and uh, make a value added product. And uh, if companies have a profit from that product, uh, we ask reinvest the part of the profit to a university. And uh, using uh, this budget, we uh, foster PhD students, more PhD students, because uh, in Japan, PhD students paying by themselves, not hired. So we would like to hire PhD students and the uh, more PhD we need. So uh, that kind of uh, industry collaboration, uh, PhD, uh, uh, fostering PhD and uh, uh, having a patent and uh, make a venture. This ecosystem we would like to rotate. And uh, to push this kind of uh, ecosystems, we, my university, reorganize administration organization, uh, strategy, strategy division, TLO, uh, Center for Entrepreneurship, and uh, collaboration with industry were merged into the new research innovation center, this building. This year we created, and the uh, first floor of uh, this uh, center is a place for ventures, meeting up the ventures, seeds and the uh, fund and and the uh, uh, alumni come together. And uh, I named this project Waseda Innovation Ballet Project. Around uh, uh, these research centers, we have a lot of ventures, but they're not networked. So we would like to network a lot of ventures with students and uh, uh, faculty members and alumni. And uh, to uh, push this kind of uh, uh, ecosystems, we started Waseda Open Innovation Forum. This year, unfortunately, we couldn't organize, we, we sh sh should have canceled. But uh, a lot of uh, industry leaders, uh, chairman of NTT, ITV president, uh, Cisco Japan president, and uh, uh, Kaufman Fellows from uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, Mr. Yamada 
uh, founder of Mercari. Those uh, members uh, collaborated, helped us. And the next year, again, we will, they will help. And uh, maybe uh, we are collaborating with uh, Oxford universities. Vice Chancellor of Oxford will participate also. We would like to ask YC to uh, collaborate with us for Open Innovation Forum next year, March 9th and 10th. So, uh, proposal of uh, proposal to YC is uh, could you plan to make a three month program in Japan for Japanese sex? Startup. This is my uh, proposal. And the question is uh, Will you be able to collaborate to accelerate or motivate many university ventures with online WOI 2021? Uh, for example, keynote speech, trial, trial training session, exhibition booth. And the final uh, question is uh, Will you be able to allow a few selected Japanese ventures to join the program in Silicon Valley by online? So uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kasara Sensei. It's, uh, it's a really encouraging and super robust system. I wish I was a, a student uh, mm -hmm. at, at, at the Waseda University today so that we can enjoy the, all the, the programs. Um, I, sorry, it's just I want to mention that I think we would go uh, one university by one uh, for the first uh, half session. And then the latter half, we would discuss uh, all together. So maybe, Kat, if you can give some feedback or questions uh, 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 for, for, for this, uh, you know, what's the program and then questions from Kasara Sensei, I think it would be great. Yes. Um, first, I wanted to say I'm, I'm really excited to hear about the Waseda Open Innovation Forum um, and happy to talk more about, you know, how we might be involved. Um, in terms of making a, you know, three-month program in Japan for Japanese startups, we get that question a lot from pretty much every country or city in the world. Um, and, you know, YC, is, we're, we're a global program and, um, you know, where, you know, we accept companies from around the world, you know, 40% are, are not US. And right now, YC is completely remote. So companies in Japan don't even have to leave for the three months or go, you know, but even when it's back in person, We've um, funded a lot of companies who've gone back and forth um, between, you know, where their HQ is, um, and you know, gone back and forth between, say, Tokyo and and Silicon Valley. And the idea is um, that you know they spend three months in Silicon Valley building up the network of founders and investors there, and then after the program, they can come back to Japan and continue to build their company here um, and to take advantage of Japanese talent as well. Um, so while it's not in the immediate, you know, plan to start a YC in Japan, um, I still think we, you know, can be very helpful to Japanese startups and I'd love to, you know, obviously fund more. Um, and so, yes, I talked a little bit about um, the Open Innovation Forum. W would love to talk to you more after, after this. Um, and then in terms of um, selecting Japanese companies, um, one of the goals of, of what we're, we're you know, doing with SVJP is to see more startups from Japan apply to Y Combinator. Because, you know, for example, um, I talk a little bit about this in my slides, but um, for last, uh, I think it was last winter batch, we only had 50 applications from Japan. Um, and, you know, we had you know, as a comparison, we had 75 from Korea, we had almost 2000 applications from India. So I think when we start seeing more startups, you know, apply to YC from Japan, we'll definitely have more Japanese startups funded. Um, so uh, that's, you know, I would love to work with you and, and all the other universities who are here today to figure out how do we foster more innovation, um, how do we you know, encourage more startups to come out of all of the universities there? Because I think you do an incredible job um, you know, fostering talent and on the research side. Um, and I think working more with you will definitely lead to more Japanese startups. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your encouraging words. And uh, maybe you have many students and uh, professors would like to apply. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. So for Kat, uh, uh, for this startup school program, uh, which is uh, fully online, of course, uh, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more so that uh, any, you know, uh, the potential startups or the, the existing startups can apply uh, for the program? Uh, the, the cycle of the applications, 
the the period of the school, how the school system is like, maybe I think it's going to be helpful if you can share a little bit on that. Oh, yeah, definitely. So um, Y Combinator, we have a program called Startup School. And if you want to learn more about it, you go to startupschool.org. And it's a um, 10 week free online program. And um, it's an ongoing program. So you can start anytime. There's no application period. Um, and you, uh, you, what, what happens when you join is you join a cohort of other founders who are in the early stages building companies around the world. So I think last year, over 45,000 founders from all over the world participated in this online program. Um, and so what happens is, you know, you have weekly, um, you know, weekly talks that you listen to. Um, you do group office hours with other startups who are going through startup school at the time. Um, you send in, you know, regular weekly updates. Um, and then often, um, you know, many of the companies who go through startup school end up applying to YC. And oftentimes um, we offer grants. So, you know, um, very often we'll do, you know, for startups who you know, complete the startup school program will offer equity free 10K grants to select startups from that group. Um, and so it's just a good way for you to get, you know, the the basics, like the, the 101 of starting a company. Um, and really anyone can go through that program. And I would highly recommend it because it's um, it's all of the curriculum that we use at YC. Um, and actually, many universities that we've worked with, um, there are some universities that have adopted that as their, you know, startup curriculum, and that's what they, you know, they use the videos and the um, content in the library to teach startups to their students. Um, so that is available to anyone, and I would highly recommend, um, you know, if if your students are interested um, in starting something and want to be part of a community, um, it's certainly something that Japanese founders can take advantage of. Great, thank you. It's startup, startupschool.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um. So maybe let me, uh, uh, toss the mic to uh, Kawahara Sensei, uh, from Tokyo University, sharing about the Hongo Valley, uh, and and a lot of uh, uh, initiatives that the the Tokyo University is uh, up and running. Oops, sorry. Um, yes, um, hi. Um, I'm Yoshihiro Kawahara from the University of Tokyo. And I'm, I am a researcher of information engineering at the University of Tokyo. And uh, um, when I was a student, I witnessed the explosion of the internet. And um, since then, I've seen you know, number of uh, a lot of uh, web services emerged from a startup in Japan too. And um, I was fortunate enough to experience my own research findings being commercialized by uh, several, actually two startup companies born out of my research group, uh, which is uh, Elephantic and also uh, Senseprat who focuses on uh, printed electronics and uh, agricultural sensing. And uh, I feel that uh, compared to 20 years ago when I was a student, uh, I think the attitude of the university uh, has changed a lot. And there are more and more examples of technologies born within universities that are being started and grown by members of the universities and also with the support of the university. According to the recent statistics, there are uh, 401 startups just only related to University of Tokyo. And actually 17 of them have gone IPO. And uh, it is said that the top five companies have a total market capitalization of 1 trillion Japanese. N. And uh, sometimes um, these days, Startups and venture capitals are clusters uh, near the University of Tokyo, and sometimes people call this area as Hongo Valley. And uh, Hongo is the name of the location uh, where University of Tokyo is, uh, exists. And um, in Hongo, actually, there are multiple uh, incubation facilities, and also on campus, there are also several incubation facilities, and also uh, TLOs and the two venture capitals are located inside the University of Tokyo. And, uh, what is remarkable is I also realized that um, number of students who want to become entrepreneur 
is increasing after seeing their successful seniors, uh, their friends become rich and then the young students uh, try to become, uh, be successful uh, as well. And, uh, but I think uh, there's um, a few more room for improvement. I think the I, few changes uh, needed to increase the number of successful companies within the, uh, uh, by using the university uh, based inventions. Um, the excellence of the research and also the size of the market is actually uh, two orthogonal axes in my opinion. And professors do great research in this area, but uh, they don't, uh, usually they don't care about the size of the market itself uh, because they simply focus on excellence uh, in terms of research. But uh, venture capitals and also startup, startup ecosystem do care about the growth. And also in some extreme sense, um, they only care about the revenue. And uh, so the kind of um, distribution of the uh, very good research and expectation from the market and the startup ecosystem are kind of, kind of different. And so the reality, most university startups uh, exist somewhere here. So uh, we, I think that uh, this gap needs to be filled and uh, then uh, we can create an even better, uh, more successful uh, community inside the university. So um, from my viewpoint, I have one suggestion and uh, three questions. And uh, I think our first proposal is about the uh, education to the professors. Professors are the hub of innovation. They create people who create innovation. And so I think why Combinator should take the advantage of uh, uh, giving the opportunities to uh, educate faculty members. And uh, uh, three other uh, question is, uh, the first question is, uh, how can we increase the number of research topics that have more growth potential and academic depths, both growth and the academic depth, depths uh, with uh, themselves of the university researchers? And the second question is, what will it take to engage the resource of the humanities uh, which make up half of the university faculties in startup innovations. And uh, the third question is, uh, um, Japanese society is kind of shrinking and uh, this may not be a good environment for startups. Uh, so it is very important to just say go global, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think many startups uh, go out of the uh, Japanese countries. Uh, so I, want to uh, ask for the, some advice to uh, do something for uh, this. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Kawahara Sensei. Um, maybe directly toss the mic to Kat for some of those questions. Yeah, so I, I actually love the idea that you came up with of providing programs for professors um, who are these hubs of innovation, who are creating, you know, these uh, educational opportunities um, and who are, who are, you know, building the next generation of founders and entrepreneurs and innovators. Um, we had something at YC that we used to do. Um, you know, we've done for a couple years. We haven't done it for maybe a year or two, but we called it Angel School or um, Startup Investor School, where it was a you know week long sort of program that we put together for people who were interested in learning how to angel invest. Um, so we brought in some of Silicon Valley's most famous angel investors, like you know Ron Conway or um, one of our partners, Paul Buchheit, who is a creator of Gmail, to talk about how they think about investing in startups. Um, and then we brought in founders to talk about, um, you know, how, you know, how um, the types of investors that they like, how investors can be value add. So I, I kind of think that there's a version of this mm. that can be built for um, the audience of professors or people who are running innovation programs at universities. Um, maybe there's, maybe it's run by the team that um, runs startup school, um, but it's, it's, uh, I think this is a really interesting concept of like, how do we better engage professors and people running university, um, incubators and accelerators, 
um, how can we help them better help the future founders? So I love that idea and, and would love to kind of, you know, kind of marinate on that and think about um, what would that curriculum even look like? What is the information that professors most need to know? Um, I think that's really interesting and I'm, I'm happy for you that you brought it up. Um, I, I actually think that the questions that you bring up are really interesting, would also be happy to hear from the other, the rest of the panel, if they have specific ideas around like, you know, how do you increase the number of research topics that you focus on at universities that have growth potential? And, um, and on the flip side, how do you start more companies, especially in, in the deep, you know, tech and biotech space that have more academic depth, um, you know, uh, and how, who, where do you find that sort of sweet spot? Um, I think one, one way, uh, is is like I'm very happy that we are establishing a relationship because I think having more of these conversations around you know what are the biggest problems that you see um, need to be solved and what are the most interesting points that you're working on um, at universities like what are the most interesting problems that you're researching um, I think you know Sam Altman who was our president for a while and is now running OpenAI was really always very focused on that talking to um, different you know computer science physics you know depart you know AI departments at universities all over the world to get a sense for like what was most important there with them um, and I think that's actually how we started focusing more on biotech and life sciences and so I think having more of these conversations is is the first step um, and an you know interesting you know kind of uh, starting point. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think the, um, I'll take the third question about Japan society shrinking. I think Japan is still a great place to sort of launch startups and, and there's a lot of opportunity. And we've, we have at this point funded a lot of international companies that are focused on an international market. So they'll launch in Colombia or they'll launch in India um, or they'll launch in Indonesia. Um, but the key is, I think, at, at a certain point for most of those companies, like their their home country isn't large enough to build, mm. uh, you know, a billion dollar company or a global company. And so they have to at some point start thinking outside of like, how do you, um, you know, one of our uh, top companies that's worth, you know, over a billion dollars. Is called Rappi, and they were doing, um, you know, grocery delivery in Colombia. Um, but in order for them to really become a, you know, a billion dollar company, they had to launch in Mexico and throughout Latin America. And and that is certainly, I think, you know, partnering, you know, with someone like us and coming to YC and helping you think more globally, helping companies think more globally, and, and about how to launch in those different markets is is certainly something that we can help with. Um, but I think. Um, as I mentioned, Japan's a great place to start. And I think the key is just more like figuring out like what is the um, what is the path to going from Japan to taking o over like the Asian or Southeast Asian market or APAC. Um, and, and, you know, I think we have a lot of founders in our community that have done that and can also provide a lot of, um, you know, advice and uh, on, on that, you know, on the way forward on that front. But yeah, and, and if any of the other speakers in, in their time also want to talk a little bit about like um, engaging the resources of the humanities, I think that's a super interesting question as well. I, I have uh, one comment. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for both of you. Uh, I'm very, you know, the stimulated by the concept by Kasahara Sensei, uh, educating the faculty, the top faculty to change the university. And uh, from for that point of view, Kat, uh, we need your help because Japanese people cannot learn from inside, but we are very open to the outside. You you know the story of the, how the Meiji Ishin has started? The you that uh, captain uh, came to Japan and Kurofune came. We need a Kurofune to educate the top level of uh, research and the university top. Uh, Kasara Sensei's idea, I love it. H how are you studying? Um, oh, no, so sorry, Kasara Sensei, sorry. Kawahara Sensei, sorry. Kasara Sensei, comment aside. I know, after Kasara Sensei, Kawahara Sensei's comment. Yeah, so uh, I think it's a very interesting idea to get uh, you know pressure from that side, <laughs> the com com country. Yeah, but uh, so I, I just want to, I simply want to know how the ex system in the uh, you know, the American university works. 
how do professors have a chance to learn the, how to start a startup companies or find a good research team that has both growth in the market and also uh, research excellence. Yeah, well, of course, AI and uh, also biotech is uh, naturally uh, uh, has both the aspect. It, it reminds me of, um, you know, I travel to a lot of U.S. universities and, uh, you know, for example, I went to um, Georgia Tech, which is, uh, you know, known for, you know, Google tries to hire a lot of engineers from Georgia Tech, but they don't have a lot of companies that start out of Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. And not, we don't get a lot of applications from Georgia Tech. And so I asked the professors there, I, was, I said, you know, you have such talented students here. Like, why aren't any of them starting companies? And they said, well, it's just the focus of certain universities. They said, mm -hmm. at MIT, their focus is teaching you to become a world-class researcher. Mm -hmm. At Stanford, their focus is really on helping you think like a founder and become an entrepreneur and start a startup. And at Georgia Tech, their goal is to is to build the best like tech employees and get their get their students the best jobs at the best tech companies out there. So it's so interesting because it's very it depends on the culture of the school and, and the culture it starts all the way down to the professors and the deans on, on what their priori priorities are and what resources they expose their students to. Um, because it's, it's at, you know, at US universities, it really is dependent on the professors and the deans to prioritize and to emphasize the fact that entrepreneurship is an option. And many times um, that happens when you have um, professors who are former founders themselves, which uh, many of you are. So I think that's a really good step in that direction of encouraging more entrepreneurship. Okay. Well, if I may not, if I'm not wrong, I think Kawahara Sensei also went to Georgia Tech. Yeah, I actually, oh, yeah. I was, I was actually in the, both MIT and uh, Georgia Tech as a visitor. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I you have all of the right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I would like to uh, uh, hear uh, uh, from uh, Kitani Sensei from uh, uh, Kyoto University uh, on this aspect as well, because he also uh, lectures the entrepreneurship at the Kyoto University. So maybe with regard to also, you know, how we can, uh, uh, you know, facilitate and then maybe potentially train, educate uh, uh, faculty for for the toward the entrepreneurship or innovation. I think maybe we'd love to also hear from uh, uh, Kitani San's point of view. Uh, maybe Kitani San, can you? Yeah, uh, faculty development is very, very important in this area, uh, entrepreneurship education. And one is to educate uh, current faculty is one, but uh, we are thinking about possibility of uh, uh, recruiting outside people uh, as lecturers, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, existing faculty is well, uh, changing ex existing faculty is pretty uh, uh, challenging sometimes. So uh, um, uh, we, we are trying to recruit uh, new outside ex uh, venture capitalists, for example, or uh, ex entrepreneur uh, turned into uh, lecturers. So uh, they need more, you know, uh, 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 systematic knowledge to transfer to students. So uh, the experience plus uh, systematic, uh, uh, you know, uh, knowledge uh, could make sense. Uh, we, are, yeah, we, we are currently trying that. It, um, it's also increasing the level of diversity, I guess, and the programmatic approach. Thank you. Maybe Kitani-san, uh, maybe uh, can you present uh, about, what, about the, the yeah. Kyoto University program, maybe? Can you see? Oh, yes. Yes, we can see. Well, uh, I'm, to, uh, I'll be, uh, I'm talking about uh, a startup uh, situation at Kyoto University. Kyoto University, post Kyoto University uh, increasing startup is a very, very uh, important uh, theme for, for us. 
and uh, uh, many initiatives are going on uh, at the university. And uh, I'll be talking uh, about, uh, you know, mainly uh, about education, but uh, some uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, one is uh, that uh, university has uh, own subsidiary of venture capital uh, with funding of uh, first funded was uh, 300 uh, million dollar million US dollar uh, size of uh, venture capital and the second fund uh, we are going to increase to uh, you know increase uh, 200 million so in total we have uh, 500 uh, uh, investment money to uh, university-based startups, and uh, and also we have uh, incubation uh, facilities, uh, physical facilities, and also we have a uh, uh, fab lab uh, which features you know three D printers and Oculus and those uh, prototyping uh, digital uh, equipment we have. So uh, the student have uh, can access to those prototyping uh, machines 24 hours. So uh, we have many initiatives. And uh, as for education, we have uh, uh, a dozen of uh, entrepreneurship courses to graduate and uh, undergraduate students. And around 700 uh, students participated last year. And uh, from the program, uh, we have more than uh, 30 startups, and, uh, 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 and five, five of them uh, obtained uh, funding, and two of them already sold their companies and realized exit. And those are all uh, you know, student-based uh, uh, startups. And our approach is basically uh, not starting from uh, technical seas, but but uh, starting from uh, future customer needs. You know, thinking about future and then uh, generate ideas uh, for the future. That's uh, basically our approach. It's, uh, not uh, she's uh, rather we are taking a market in uh, approach. Let me introduce. Uh, very recent two examples of companies. Uh, this, uh, uh, you know, both of them are AI-based uh, companies. This uh, company, Ruteria, is uh, applying uh, AI technology to manufacturing process. Uh, so uh, deep learning uh, to the, you know, automated, automated quality inspection. Uh, based on product appearance data. And uh, so uh, there's a, no need to predefine uh, defect ident identification uh, algorithm. So, so any deviation from the right products can be automatically identified. So this uh, technology is currently applied to uh, many industrial products and they have currently uh, 17 uh, full-time employees. This is very new, recently established. The second one is uh, AI applied to healthcare and uh, uh, basically uh, medical record analysis. This was recently chosen as uh, Microsoft for startups and also NVIDIA inception program. So uh, this, yeah, this is also, I think, well, very interesting. So our proposal and the question is basically, well, the proposal is to uh, to organize a real uh, event uh, sometime soon, um, maybe next year, but uh, <laughs> in Kyoto. Uh, we want to invite you and uh, to Kyoto. So, you know, there are many temples, of course, and uh, I think uh, you can enjoy staying here. And also, uh, there are many opportunities in healthcare and also industry. Uh, there are many industry companies around Kyoto and also uh, Kansai area. Agriculture is also a topic. So we can, uh, you know, digital transformation uh, about in, in those areas. And our, our, our question is basically, uh, 
we need more faculty members. Uh, as uh, Kawahara Sensei uh, told, uh, we, need mo we need more lecturers. And uh, uh, we need more Silicon Valley trained Japanese speaking members. Uh, th th that's a very large issue because uh, those guys uh, we mentioned cannot speak English. You know, they are, uh, you know, computer science uh, people and uh, uh, no English at all. So, uh, so, so we need, uh, you know, uh, English speaking mentors. So how to source them? So how to train them? That's, uh, I think, maybe we need your help. Thank you. Great. Um, I think maybe he, again directly toss the mic to Kat first. Uh, yeah. I think what you're bringing up is one of the biggest challenges that we have in terms of um, getting more Japanese startups funded by global investors is not having um, in probably both sides not having enough Japanese speaking mentors and not having enough of the founders speaking, you know, enough English. And so I don't know, I would love to hear all of your thoughts. And, and I think one thing that we've seen, you know, is if, you know, sometimes you have um, founders or students who, who've done some amount of schooling or university in the US and then they come back to Japan, that often is probably a really good starting point. Um, but um, I think it's, it's a problem that we haven't solved. And I would love to kind of, if, if there's any way we can help, uh, let us know. But if there are other, you know, ideas. Right. What I, what I actually started seeing as the opportunities or silver lining with that aspect is that, uh, you know, there are more diversity uh, in a faculty or student, uh, particularly coming from, uh, you know, stud studying abroad in Japan from overseas. Uh, so like, uh, just as an example, uh, two years back when we initially, you know, organized this YC event for the first time, we invited uh, a person called Takino-san. Uh, he's the founder of Mujin, the robotic AI company. And his CTO was actually from Israel, uh, studied at the Tokyo University. So I know they are becoming very much global uh, presence, uh, global exposed uh, company now. So I think uh, one, one aspect could be also increasing the diversity uh, uh, within the startup as well. Uh, so that one, if it's not all, but one or two of uh, co-founders can speak uh, English or can have some more global presence. I think that's, uh, I also saw Kawahara Sensei's uh, faculty is pretty much uh, diversified, uh, Kawahara Labo, or itself, of, you know, people coming from Vietnam, uh, China, I guess. I think that type of setup uh, is showing some good uh, potential prospect uh, with, with that uh, language issue. Just, just my comment. Sorry. So maybe, maybe I uh, would love to uh, hear uh, Subota Sensei's, uh, 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 you know, lecturing. Uh, particularly, uh, of course, you know, he's an expert uh, uh, in his domain, but also he runs uh, startups by himself. And also, I learned that uh, uh, when we talked about this humanity part, he actually tried to, uh, uh, you know, study the, the business school so that he can combine. The, the you know technological research aspect to businesses. So he's really uh, making a role model by himself. So we'd love to hear uh, Tsubota Sensei's story too. Uh, I think Tsubota Sensei, I think you are muted. Uh, how, how is this? Is that okay? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sato-san, to introduce. I'm Kazuo Tsubota, the professor of ophthalmology and also the dean, uh, the CEO of Tsubota Laboratory. As you know, that uh, several years ago, the Japanese uh, government changed the regulation uh, school education act. So university used to be just doing the uh, research and education, but now we have, uh, uh, you know, the we, we have a new job that is innovation. Innovation is described in the school education act. This act changed the medical school. Medical school is one of the most uh, conventional and uh, very old fashioned uh, style. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is a lecture I have given the last year. Uh, it's an entrepreneurship education program. Please guess where did I give this lecture? 
we went to the Tokyo stock market, we have brought all of the students <laughs> to them. And uh, let's uh, see that the ring that we should uh, uh, ring in the in the future. The uh, total 85 students went together, but uh, it's amazing, 37 KO Medical School students went. It's a new era that I hope you will uh, feel that uh, you know trend is changing even in the medical school. Uh, <clears throat> with the uh, Waseda University, that the K University got a funding uh, in the metropolitan area with the uh, uh, Tokyo University and the other universities from the uh, Monbu Kagak show that the mix. And we are now uh, making the open innovation system. Uh, we are behind uh, compared to the Tokyo University or Kyoto University, but we like to catch up. Uh, since, uh, <coughs> you know, the Fukuzawa Sensei's idea is that we have to do ourselves. So not only depending on the university itself, we have our own independent uh, society. It's a venture council. Now 13 companies uh, made the venture council, uh, startup companies group uh, from KO Medical School. Uh, look at this 13. Uh, they are the companies and this is the department of origin, uh, especially the ophthalmology, my, my origin. I look at this ophthalmology, ophthalmology and ophthalmology. So out of 13, four uh, uh, started from ophthalmology and uh, now we are expanding. So we are now educating the concept, uh, what is innovation? Uh, I have learned from Bill Ollett at MIT that innovation is invention multiply commercialization. It's very, very simple. Uh, usually the startup company from university, especially the medical school, very strong in science invention, but very weak commercialization. So when you see that innovation matrix, this is uh, you know the matrix I'm always using to educate the medical students or medical faculties. Uh, this is the st strength of science. The horizontal is a commercialization. When you just make uh, without deep thought, you got D. Typical university stuff, very strong science, but very weak commercialization. A lot of successful company emerged from this area the commercialization very strong. The science is so so, but it's successful. A lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies, uh, I think, belong to this. But the KO Medical School would like to challenge a area, ideal company. The science is very strong, but also commercialization is so strong. And we need cat's help for this education, for the commercialization. Now the university uh, medical school is changing. Uh, it was difficult. Now we can rent our office in the hospital. So the Tsubota Laboratory uh, was uh, uh, <coughs> renting. Uh, this is was a uh, you know patient room, but now renovated to the uh, companies for venture. And also, I'm a, a professor of the Department of Ophthalmology but also I'm a CEO. So I, I have a dual uh, responsibility. It was impossible before, but now education act was changed. So the, they, they, of course, uh, through the COI committee, I was given the authority that I can handle the Tsubota laboratory and also same time, the department of ophthalmology, which is the biggest department of ophthalmology in Japan. Also, we have started the entrepreneur development program because we need a commercialization. So we like to educate the person who can run the company. We are very strong in the science, but we need somebody who can run our startup company. Uh, for, uh, we are doing a lot of things. This is Katada Sensei, my colleague is uh, providing, for example, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 
uh, we have a startup fourth startup seminar. I will give you the uh, education on seminar. This is experience from the venture con council company, and Inaba-san from uh, Keisan Show from the uh, government. Uh, in the, he's the head of healthcare science, and the Mera-san is a very famous uh, woman who started uh, uh, the cloud funding. And uh, so we, we are learning these things. And also, uh, as we have visited last time that uh, Tokyo stock, stock market, this time through the web, uh, we can see the inside of the Tokyo stock market. Uh, this is uh, November 17th. All of the program is free. So all the participants of uh, this lecture, please come. And uh, there's a video cam person going to the uh, the Tokyo stock market and see a lot of uh, facilities and uh, I'm in the back I'm in the web and I instructing oh please go to this direction or what is this so it's a very exciting era is coming so this is a summary uh, we have uh, 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 done that established innovation committee or uh, uh, healthcare innovation as a major subject of the graduate studies uh, and also as a uh, I was mentioned that I went to the executive MBA program, and now every year some of the, our you know member go to the executive MBA program and learn the commercialization. Okay, uh, so this is uh, uh, the uh, summary, and this is a proposal, uh, especially for the aspects of commercialization. We need some help collaborative educational program uh, with uh, a Y Combinator might be very good. Question, since uh, we are in the web era, what is the best way to learn from your experience quickly and cheaply? Uh, and uh, you know, we don't have to go to your place physically. That, that's a wonderful era. And also uh, one thing is how can we handle the language gap? Because a lot of uh, Japanese people hesitate to speak English. The lastly, the, this is an interesting idea that I have just learned that how we cha can change the speed of professor in medical school. Uh, although it's changing still, the you know, mainstream of a medical professor are very, very conservative. Uh, making money is a bad thing. Uh, how do we change? Thank you very much. Please, Kat. Hello. It was super. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I think that this is super interesting. Um, a couple of things. I'm very encouraged about the, um, the Education Act that, um, you know, now even the medical schools thinking about innovation and how right, to start that solve these big problems at scale. Yes. Uh, I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, another thing I, this made me think of was when YC was started in 2005, it was it was easy for someone with a business background, you know, uh, an MBA to get funding from VCs and be taken seriously as a founder. And when YC started, I think one of the things that we really changed was that if you were technical, if you were a computer scientist, if you were a first time founder, you could still be taken seriously. Like YC would fund you and help you grow. And then you'd be taken seriously by the big venture capitalists like Sequoia or Andreessen. Um, and so that was 15 years ago. And now I think we're really starting to see that trend with doctors and scientists and researchers. Um, I think back, you know, as you all know, you've probably seen a lot of doctors as like the um, chief science officer, chief medical officer, but less who are CEOs. And we believe that that's changing now. Like you're seeing a lot more, you know, people with this deep academic background who are now running their companies as the CEOs. And so I think that's really exciting. And you're already sort of on top of that trend, thinking about how do you take, you know, medical students and medical professors who are classically more conservative and how do you change their thinking around risk and, and launching companies and, and, um, and so I, I think a lot of that's that's a hard question because it's it's so cultural. Like if making money is bad, but I think the way we think about it isn't just about making money or greed. It's about how can we impact a million people, a billion people. How can you actually solve these problems at scale versus solving them one on one with just you know individual patients or in a small setting? 
Um, and so maybe there's just, it's just a little bit of like more cultural into, you know, and kind of um, having our cultures kind of work together more and, and um, figure that out. But I love the idea, the idea that came up again of building a program for professors or, uh, you know, uh, people who are running the programs at the med school to, to, um, to figure out like what, what needs to be taught or what needs to be, um, how do you think about commercializing research? I think that's really interesting and something that we've, we've thought about more as well as we've started to see more doctors start companies. Um, let's see. Oh, what? so the web era, you mentioned how best to learn. Um, we've um, started, you know, startup school, which I talked about earlier, which is all online. Um, we also have a resource library. It's ycombinator.com slash library that, and I think you can now learn most things online. Um, and the big, um, the big thing missing from online education is maybe building that network. And so there has to be that human component as well of, of you know, uh, not just reading about what you're doing, but but like being exposed to founders and um, and other people and investors and, and having those conversations. Um, and so I think a, a combination, I, I think you mentioned having a, an event in Kyoto and and I do agree, like being in person does make a difference. It's more powerful to to create those, you know, relationships in person. Um, but I do think, you know, starting out with a lot of online resources um, through startup school, and then now YC is essentially a remote global program. Um, a lot of this stuff can be done and taught and um, communicated online, which is exciting. Yeah, those are very, very helpful, uh, especially for the professor's education that, uh, you know, you use, you use a very good word, uh, impact. You know, uh, we need that impact and the change the world. Uh, so, but a lot of people think, oh, it's a commercial, it's a business, but it's not. Of course, it's an aspect, it's a business. But uh, what we do is that we like to uh, change the world, you know, the change the world, a better place, right? So yeah. I like, yeah, yeah, I like to emphasize, but also I like you to emphasize <laughs> to Japanese, all the stubborn professor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that because I, I think it's important. It's like, I think the best founders don't just do it for money. They do it because they want to impact a billion people's lives and they want to change the world and make it a better place. And that sounds maybe corny, but I think it's true. Yeah, yes. Really. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you. It's just, again, super encouraging. Thank you, everyone. I think we have uh, like six, seven minutes uh, for, for free discussion. So feel free to ask each other. Or let, we can discuss in any, any topic. Um, yeah, I'd Asara, Asara say, um, please. Yeah, so uh, Professor Tsuba talked about the conservativity of the Japanese societies. Not only uh, medical school, uh, every uh, Japanese society uh, is conservative. And uh, we should change. Uh, to do so, we need a successful example. Mm. Uh, if we can make a successful example, uh, making money and also uh, uh, work for people, and uh, also work work environment. That's kind of a successful example we can make. And uh, a lot of uh, rich, super rich professors and students. And uh, maybe <laughs> you can change the situation. Wonderful. That's all. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful comment. <laughs> yeah, well, I was really amazed by the, the names of alumni of uh, Waseda. In, uh, you know, it's, uh, I suppose this uh, alumni network, also I learned uh, this morning from Kat presentation, that one of the most powerful aspect is alumni of YC uh, founders, uh, uh, forming a you know, great founder community. Uh, so if we can enhance, uh, you know, the build the, the community across the colleges, uh, across the industry, I think that's going to be a tremendous uh, value, which would long last. Yeah, we, we are trying. Uh, we are trying to make a, a worldwide alumni uh, network. Alumni. And uh, also, uh, we would like to make an advisory committee with a successful alumni. Yes, uh, that's encouraging. I think, uh, uh, I, I suppose we still have uh, Yuri uh, on, on, on attending. Uh, is Yuri here? If, if it's so, uh, I just want to ask, uh, because uh, you know, throughout these uh, three days, we talk about uh, you know, how Japanese deep tech companies or uh, biotech companies can develop uh, startups and go global. And then uh, YC has been supporting uh, these biotech companies for quite some years. And then just want to understand what are the background 
of, of, of these uh, new emerging uh, deep tech companies coming up uh, in the US. Uh, of course, now YC has been supporting as a very active uh, you know, or supporter, but uh, just uh, the trend of, uh, of, of technology, Kat mentioned like uh, AWS education, but I just want to, uh, 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 you to elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, it's uh, having some internet issues. Can you, can you hear me? I yes, yes. I'm so to repeat the question, what is the uh, characteristics of the founders? Not, uh, yeah, um, well, what are pushing, uh, what are making more possible or for those biotech companies, uh, which are emerging like in past five years compared to 10, 15 years, what made it more possible or for startups to build uh, 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 biotech businesses? I think the same thing that made it possible to build software companies uh, at scale 10 years ago is the force at work now, where once upon a time, you needed to have a tremendous amount of infrastructure. If you wanted to build a software company, you had to build your own server farm. And you needed to have people that understood how to, you know, how are you going to maintain those servers? And you had a, getting high speed internet was a challenge if you wanted to do anything at all. And all that's different now. And similarly for bio, back when I started my first company, we invested literally millions of dollars building infrastructure and trying to make sure that we could do things internally. Today, you literally can start a company on a credit card. There, uh, there's been so much diversification in uh, contract research organizations, for example, and uh, actually there's been so much entrepreneurship by professors at universities who are specialists in very specific areas, who it turns out they have additional bandwidth or university core facilities that have additional bandwidth that allow them to do experiments for other people in some other part of the world. Which means that today, if you wanna start a company targeting viruses, you need to be able to understand what are the experiments to design and explain to people how you will do something that other people cannot and then go to the internet and type in the experiments you want to do, as opposed to pipetting and buying the pipettes and buying the reagents. So the, the fact that the infrastructure is now infinitely scalable and remote allows us to do hard tech, biotech, uh, in, in a way that it just fundamentally wasn't possible when Pfizer and Merck got started. You know, once upon a time, the companies were started by traveling salesmen who had the ability to compound chemicals. Uh, today, companies are started by people who understand how to design experiments and pay somebody else to compound their chemicals. The, so virtual, the fact that we can have a virtual company in pretty much any domain is it is a quantum shift and it's all but that requires a shift in the minds of founders because many of us are trained in how to do things with our own hands how do we do the experiment not how do we teach other people how do we explain it so other people can do it and that shift which is starting to happen i think be, actually because people are learning to code so if I, if I want to do something, I can pipette. If I want to tell a computer to do something, I have to be very, very clear. So once I can explain things clearly in any language, whether it's software or human, I can now have things done remotely. And that skill set, which is becoming much more common, is I think also allowing people to start more virtual companies. Long answer to your question. Oh, it's Hope super that. insightful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it really makes sense. It's, and again, it's encouraging. Thank you. I'm um, sorry. I think uh, time is uh, getting up. Uh, and uh, I think it was a really great session and then uh, very insightful as well as very encouraging. And we have uh, uh, two more days, uh, you know, to discuss 
you know, how ja Japanese founders, Japanese startups can go more global in, especially in biotech, deep tech uh, uh, domain uh, from, you know, tomorrow as well, the day after as well. Uh, so again, I just would like to thank everyone, uh, all the professors here. Uh, and then uh, hopefully once things settle, uh, next time when we organize uh, this event, I, we hope uh, we can have Kat and Ruri at each campus. Uh, of the university so that we can have even further discussions going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you.